From restaurants to writers to kung fu flicks, whether you realize it or not, our culture has been shaped by Chinese immigrants, their kids, and their grandkids. Chinese people have been coming to the U.S. for more than 150 years to pursue economic opportunities, escape political unrest, and seek higher education. The over 4 million Chinese people live in the U.S. today. At the beginning, these numbers were pretty small. The first group of immigrants left because of political instability and news of golden jobs in California. And extra hands were needed to build the Transcontinental Railroad. And these forces kicked off the first wave of Chinese immigration. But what started out as job opportunities in America took an ugly turn, discrimination and violence. White laborers felt like Chinese immigrants were threatening their jobs and took extreme measures to get rid of them. They burnt down Chinatowns, publicly lynched Chinese people, and passed racially targeted laws. This is how we ended up with the Chinese Exclusion Act, the first U.S. law restricting immigration based on race. After the act was passed, the Chinese population started to drop, until World War II. After World War II, the U.S. realized this irony and repealed the laws, but was mostly for appearance. An immigration quota was set for just 105 Chinese immigrants each year. And from here, the Chinese American community really started to develop. Meanwhile, the civil rights movement was in full swing, leading to the passage of the Immigration Act of 1965, officially ending the 105 quota. Here, the Chinese population really started to pick up. The majority came from Hong Kong and Taiwan, including some mainland Chinese refugees. And many were coming to study in American universities. From 1950 to 1960, the Chinese population doubled. From the poor to the persecuted to the wealthy, the Chinese American story ranges. And like all immigrants, there's always been more than one side. The dreams of a better life and the challenges they've left behind. Um, I am first generation. Where I live outside. I've always lived outside of Chinatown. So, so when you first come to America with your parents, you still live outside? We live outside of Chinatown. For us here, because this is where my husband works, it's closer to his job. <笑>我觉得吧就刚开始可能刚来那会儿就其实心里没太大的想法可能就觉得住中国城就觉得就其实也没有太大想法呃没有选择住中国城从五年前来的时候就<笑> 当时我觉得可能刚来的时候觉得中国城还是我自个人感觉好像还是不是特别安全吧而加上孩子要上学可能要选择一个比较好的学区所以我就住在KT Houston's Chinatown and later the city's more pan-Asian center of population has moved several times over the last 130 years A lot of the Asian population leaves that heads to a, a new area, that next migration, what caused so much of the community to migrate out to the southwest parts of town, particularly the new Asia town along Bel Air? Mm -hmm. That was really a gradual shift. Over the area, I mean, continued to grow very quickly through the 60s. And then uh, Houston's Asian population. I thought it was interesting that you know, a lot of the, the Asians as well, they're sort of like a lot of the population in Houston at the time, you build 59, you build other freeways, mm -hmm. and then you get the suburban life. So they were moving out to this area along Bel Air to the southwest, but still commuting back in to work in the present Chinatown, which eventually, of course, disappeared. Right. And you saw that happen with a lot of mm. inner city development, where people were moving to the suburbs. Then you had, you know, suburban business centers sort of develop and then get established for themselves. 
but uh, yeah, like you said, I mean, a lot of people moving here were interested in the same thing that the other American middle class was interested in, was pursuing this sort of American dream I- idea. Um, here, when we were younger, Chinatown has changed now. So here, when we were younger, Chinatown was very Chinese. But I think people don't live there because the school system is not great. Because you're in the city, there is no school system.美国好像是最大的，它的那个它的餐饮业、餐饮这块应该满足了我们很多人的中国味。所以我觉得它是必不可少的一个存在，而且呃，相信它也有一定的历史历史渊源在那里。我没有考究过，但是呃，我觉得
。当然，我们未必亲身经历了那样的事情，但是确实有这样的事情。就是说，作为一个居住地，不作为一个首选，对，作为一个消费吃饭的这样的中国餐馆。可能我觉得以前的那些五六十年代他们过来的移民，可能因为语言的问题啊，或者是交通的问题，可能他们觉得住在中国城方便一些。那现在的一些年轻人过来呢？本身他们的可能语言的问题不是特别大，然后为了孩子的一个教育问题，可能可能相对来说会选择中国城以外的一些地区。我想应该是不是这样的问题？可能对我来说，呃，语言和交通，我觉得，包括孩子的教育，我觉得对我来说，是很大的一个。对对对。对还有一个，如果既然到了美国来，我觉得应该尽可能的融入美国的文化吧。那如果你只是局限于在中国城的范围，那相对来说局限一些。<笑>